morning, everyone. Welcome to The Water's Edge. Whether you're joining us online through Facebook or YouTube, or if you're right here with us in person, we're so delighted to have you. If you're joining us virtually, remember to hit that like button, share our content, or drop a comment just to let us know you're here. For those in the room, we have some real important updates just for you. If you have little ones, our nursery and kids church are just across in the lobby, providing a safe space and an engaging space for everyone. The heart of our community is our volunteers, and we're always looking for more passionate individuals to join us. So to get involved, simply scan the barcode on the screen or text the word volunteer to 844-793-7384. Let's not forget, we're a welcoming space for everyone, especially those facing challenges. If you know someone in need, extend an invitation to join us in person or let them know about our online content. Now get ready for an uplifting experience this morning as we come together to worship and receive a powerful message from Pastor Tony. What's up, everyone? Good morning and welcome to our Water's Edge Sunday morning online worship experience. Once again, thank you so very much for tuning in, hanging out with us today, worshiping with us today. For those of you that continue to share these online worship experiences with your circle, thank you so very much for doing that. Continue to do that. We have people tuning in and getting help with their life and with their faith and their walk with God from all over the place. Also, for those of you that continue to worship with us online through giving, giving and generosity because that's an awesome act of worship. That's how we all come together to help people and love people. Thank you so very much for doing that. Maybe you're meeting our new $10 challenge. Thank you for doing that. Continue to do that. You allow us together to help more people, love more people, feed more people, serve more people, shelter more people, and show our community the hands and feet of God's love in the body of Christ. All right, so today we start a brand new series entitled Summer Revival Sundays, and this study as we go through the heat and the exhaustion of the summer and also as we go through the exhaustion of life, this series is intended to help us because sometimes we all need it. It's intended to encourage us and lift us back up again because sometimes we all need it. It's intended to recharge us and grow us and convict us and challenge us on the inside and revive us because sometimes we all need it. In our little house that we have downtown, I have dark wood floors. I also have a little bulldog with white fur. And every single day, every month, every week, in every season of every year, it doesn't matter how hot it is outside, it doesn't matter how cold it is outside, it doesn't matter how pleasant it is outside, that little bulldog sheds that white hair all over that dark wood floor all day, every single day, every week and every month of every season. And it's very, very noticeable. You can see the hair all over the place and when you look at it and it's not cleaned up, it just looks dirty. And I gotta be honest with you, it's impossible for me to rest and relax when the entire floor looks like there's white dog hair all over it. It's impossible for me to get any type of rest and relaxation until I get up and I manage to clean the entire floor. And so this is what I do two times a day. I wake up and I get a big, big push broom and I push broom the entire house. I sweep the entire house and I get all that dog hair in a pile and then I vacuum it up and then I mop the entire house. And I do that every morning and I do that every evening. And this is something that I've learned. The cleaner that I keep it, it doesn't get as messy. The cleaner that I keep it, the easier it is to manage it. It's gonna get dirty again. It's gonna get messy again. But the cleaner I keep it, the 
more attention that I give it, the more maintenance that I give it, the more focus that I give it, then the cleaner I can keep it. And I find that sometimes my soul feels that way. Sometimes my heart feels that way. Sometimes my spirit feels that way. Sometimes my faith feels that way, that it needs constant focus and constant attention and constant maintenance. Constant focus, constant attention, and constant maintenance. Sometimes it feels like I cannot and I should not rest until I get my anger cleaned up and under control in my life. I cannot and I should not rest until I get my resentment cleaned up and under control in my life. I cannot and I should not rest until I get my feelings and my reactions and my impulses cleaned up and under control in my life. I cannot and I should not rest until I get my temptations cleaned up and under control in my life. I cannot and I should not rest until I get my excuses and my storms and my struggles cleaned up and under control in my life. It'll come back. It'll attack you again. It'll tempt you again. It'll bother you again. It'll hurt you again. But the more under control you keep it, it breaks its power over you. It weakens its power over you. It eliminates its power over you. Notice this verse today, 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 through 9. If you're still with me, Sam's still with you. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering that you are. If we all got a news alert today on our phones, if everybody's phones just started to go off with this loud alert and the alert said this, you have to be careful, you have to watch out. There's a wild, full-grown, loose lion in our neighborhood. A lion got loose from the zoo or for something like that. And there's a full grown lion loose in our neighborhood. Well, you probably wouldn't just go take the family for a walk that day with the dog. You probably wouldn't go hang out on your front yard, on your front street, just enjoying the weather. No, you would be alert. You would be watchful. You would be careful. There's a full grown wild lion on the loose prowling around. And in the same way, we have enemies in our heart. We have enemies in our soul. We have enemies in our spirit. We have enemies in our mind that's always looking to attack. That storm is always prowling around in your life, so be alert and be ready. That giant, that feeling, that impulse is always prowling around in your life, so be alert and be ready. That habit, that pattern, that addiction is always prowling around in your life, so be alert and be ready. That selfishness, that valley is always prowling around in your life, so be alert and be ready. And today I just want to share my heart with you about one of my greatest enemies enemies, one of my greatest struggles and one of my greatest battles that I've learned to watch out for, that I've learned to be alert for, that I've learned to stand firm against and how I've learned to control it so it doesn't control me. Today, I want to share my heart with you about how I have learned to control this struggle, how I have learned to control this battle and this storm so it doesn't control me. And this is what it is. It's one word. And notice this today. It's the word tomorrow, tomorrow. And I'll come back in just a few moments and tell you what I mean by that one word tomorrow. But first, some of the words of Christ. Matthew chapter 6, verses 33 through 34. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything that you need. So don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. There's that word for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Right here, Jesus says that in our life, our very first priority should be seeking Jesus. In our life, our very first passion should be loving God. God, finding God's will, knowing God's will, and doing God's will, and loving Jesus with all of our heart, and that we shouldn't get consumed with worrying about what may happen to our life, what may happen to our circumstances, what may happen to our situation tomorrow. Don't get consumed with worry about tomorrow, because if you get consumed with worry about tomorrow, then you can't be consumed with your top priority, and that's knowing Jesus and following Jesus. Today has enough to worry about so don't get concerned with worries about tomorrow because it hasn't happened yet and in the context in the verses right before this Jesus is saying that you don't really have to worry about tomorrow why because God loves you and God's going to be there with you through the good times he's going to be there through the tough times he's going to be there through the mountaintops he's going to be there through the valleys he's going to be there when you face your giants he's going to be there when you face your storms he's going to be there when you have victories he's going to be there and 
And just like he takes care of all the flowers in the fields, don't worry about tomorrow because he loves you and he's going to take care of you. The only thing the flowers have to do is wake up today and bloom today and let God take care of them today. So don't get consumed with worry about what may happen to you tomorrow. God loves you and be consumed with knowing him and following Jesus today. We move on. James chapter 4, verses 13 through 17. Look here, you who say today or tomorrow, there's that word again, we're going to a certain town and we're going to stay there for a year. We will do business there. We're going to make a profit. How do you know what your life is going to be like tomorrow? How do you know that? Your life is like the morning fog. It's here for a little while and then it's gone. What you ought to say is this, if the Lord wants us to, we will live and do this or that. Otherwise, you are boasting about your own pretentious plans and all such boasting is evil remember it's a sin to know what you ought to do and then not to do it and so in one instance Jesus says stop worrying so much about what may happen to you tomorrow live for today love God and serve God today and then James comes along who's the half brother of Jesus and he says this you keep putting off on tomorrow what you know you need to do today you know you need to do this today but you keep putting it off on tomorrow Tomorrow. You know you need to overcome this today, but you keep putting it off on tomorrow. You know you need to defeat this today. You know you need to take that step today. You know you need to choose this and decide this today, but you keep putting it off on tomorrow. Now, when I said earlier that one of my major battles in my life that I've struggled with was found in that one word, that word tomorrow, this is what I meant by that. There's these two distracting thoughts that always swim around in my mind all the time over and over and over again. And if I dwell on these two distracting thoughts about tomorrow, it just makes my soul and my faith and my resilience and my spirit weaker and weaker and weaker. Two completely different thoughts about tomorrow. They're completely different thoughts about tomorrow, but two thoughts that if I dwell on them, they just make me weaker and weaker. And this is what they are. And remember this today. The first one is this. If you're still with me, say I'm still with you. I will do that tomorrow. I know I need to face this, but I will face that tomorrow. I know I need to deal with this, but I'll deal with that tomorrow. I know I need to overcome this or start doing this, but I'll do it tomorrow. I know I need to take that step. I know I need to make that choice. I know I need to make that decision, but I will do it tomorrow. The second thought is this, and notice this today. What will happen to me tomorrow? What's going to happen to my life and my health and my business tomorrow? What if, what if, what if? What's going to happen to my household, my future plans, my security tomorrow? What if? What's going to happen to my happiness and my stability and my faith tomorrow? What if? I mean, what if it's not good? What if it's devastating tomorrow? What if it breaks my heart tomorrow? What if it's confusing and painful and traumatic tomorrow? Or what if it's just lonely, just deeply, deeply lonely? What if that all happens tomorrow? Two of my greatest enemies that I deal with, I deal with that one word tomorrow. I will put that off on tomorrow. And what if that happens to me tomorrow? I will deal with that tomorrow. What if that happens to my life tomorrow? I will face that tomorrow. What if it all comes crashing down on me tomorrow? And those those two thoughts swim around in my mind over and over and over again. I will get to that tomorrow, but what if something bad happens tomorrow? And when you focus on them, it'll make you weaker and weaker and weaker. And so this is what I do. Whenever I feel like those two thoughts are just overcoming my mind and consuming my heart and consuming my soul and making me feel weak in my spirit, I always turn to this one principle that I discovered in one of my favorite verses that talks about this very subject. So so before we get to the principle, let's first look at the verse. Notice this today, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 17. If you're still with me, Sam's still with you. So be careful how you live. Don't live foolish, but live like those who were wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these fleeting days, in these dark days, in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Right here, the missionary says that you and I should be very alert and very careful to make the most of every opportunity that we have today. Today, make the most of every opportunity to do something good and faithful 
physical and spiritual today. Why? Because you have no idea what tomorrow holds. Today, make the most of every opportunity to do something Christ-like and loving and compassionate. Today, why? Because you don't know what tomorrow holds. Today, make the most of every opportunity to do something productive, to do something productive, to do something peaceful and positive and productive today. Why? Because you really don't know what tomorrow holds. And so make the most of every opportunity. First Thessalonians 5 verse 11, encourage each other and build each other up just as you are already doing. Sometimes you and I just need some encouragement, some encouragement from each other, from God and from people who love God, some encouragement so we can see it and feel it and know it and live it and overcome it and experience it. And this is that one principle that always encourages my heart anytime those two distracting thoughts consume my mind and make my spirit and my faith weak. I remind myself of this one truth over and over again and this is what it is and notice this today. I surrender to the outcome of my circumstances but I never surrender to my excuses. I surrender to the outcome of my circumstances but I will never surrender to my excuses. I'll leave my future in the hands of God and I'll defeat my excuses by the Spirit of God. When I face storms, when I have heartache, when I fight against my giants, I will leave my future in the hands of God and I'll defeat my excuses by the Spirit of God. When I battle against my struggles, when I battle against my fear, when I battle against my sadness, I'll leave my future in the hands of God and I'll defeat my excuses by the Spirit of God. When I get consumed with excuses, when I feel weak on the inside, when I feel like giving up, when I feel discouraged on the inside, I will leave my future in the hands of God and I'll defeat my excuses by the Spirit of God. When I feel low, when I feel lost, when I feel like I'm searching, when I feel like I'm empty, I will leave my future in the hands of God and I'll defeat my excuses by the Spirit of God. When I feel like doing tomorrow what I know that I need to do today, when I feel like letting those thoughts about what's going to happen to me tomorrow, what's going to happen to me tomorrow, overcome my mind, overcome my feelings, overcome my actions, overcome my reactions. I remind myself every single day that I will surrender my circumstances to the, the hands of God and I will never let my excuses defeat me. And so I give my life over to the hands of God and I give my future over to the hands of God and I will defeat my excuses every single time by the Spirit of God. Tune in next week for more Summer Revival Sundays. Thank you so very much for hanging out with us today. Now continue to stay plugged in for an amazing time of worship with the amazing Water's Edge worship team. We love you all and we hope this has strengthened your heart today.
powerful message from Pastor Tony. And we sincerely hope that today's worship experience have left you feeling encouraged and inspired. And if you found a connection in the service and want to stay tuned throughout the week on social media, you can check us out at Water's Edge Gathering on Facebook or Water's Edge underscore OC on Instagram. And for a more interactive experience, consider downloading our app. It enables you to participate in online giving, enjoy worship songs, and also replay messages from Pastor Tony. And whether you're curious about salvation and baptism, interested in volunteering, or have a prayer request, make your way to the lobby, and our wonderful volunteers will get you plugged in. We absolutely love you guys and can't wait to see you back next week at the Water's Edge, where everyone has a meaningful place to belong.